Let's hot wire that bad boy. The nature of competition obviously brings out a lot, especially when you fit universities against each other. So this is kind of engineering as a sport. We have a really strong history of winning. We won all the years I was here. I think effectively we've been the team to beat. OSU, they have a real commitment to the program. It's not seen as an afterthought or just some, some kind of extracurricular club. They're prepared to go into the world and, and take over some of these engineering jobs. These jobs, they're high paying and there's gonna be a lot of them. American automakers will manufacture millions of EVs by 2030 with goals to go fully electric in the next decade. Ford projects that EVs will be half of global sales by 2030 and GM is on track to produce 400,000 EVs by the first half of 2024. We're talking a lifetime of career opportunities. This competition is turning out students that are phenomenal across the entire spectrum, and the difference between first place and last place really is not that much. In 2022, OSU placed second in the Department of Energy's EcoCar EV Challenge, sponsored by General Motors and MathWorks. 11 universities competed to turn the new Chevy Blazer into a hybrid electric vehicle. Our team basically delivered a vehicle with a strong electric motor in the rear of the vehicle, a downsized turbocharged engine in the front with a belted starter alternator to allow the engine to rapidly start and stop to improve the overall fuel economy. And also to add autonomy features, again with the mission to increase safety, improve economy, and also reduce the environmental impact. I worked on this car for about four years. I started at the beginning of it. And I've been on mostly the mechanical teams and I mounted all of our ADAS sensors. We have six radars on the car and then I designed the mount for this camera and then the shifter, we switched this out. So I did like the push button cover for that. It looks so high tech. So tell me what it feels like now to be driving it and it's like, street legal and you did this. It's very weird. For the longest time, we weren't able to drive it on the road. But after a grueling four-year challenge, building a car in the middle of a pandemic, the OSU EcoCar team found themselves on the road to Yuma, Arizona. It was 105 one of the days we were testing, so our car is out there running the whole day with the sun beating down on it. We drove from Yuma, which is right on the border, up to Phoenix. It's like um, a little bit of a joy ride. <laughs> <laughs> In the heat, as a convoy with the other schools, and it was basically a, you know, a durability test for the vehicles. And you made it? Yeah, oh yeah, we made it. Of course, there's the anxiety of not knowing if it's going to work out. But the fact that you're basically seeing your, I'll call it the baby, go out on the road and uh, do phenomenally well was the most exciting part. Those final competitions took place at the Phoenix International Raceway. The students got to drive their vehicles around the track. And even some guys like me who are race fans had a chance to drive around the Phoenix International Raceway, doing that vehicle judging. And there's a whole series of, of things that are judged from safety, from acceleration, braking, uh, the technologies they're working on. Uh, these things are all judged to make sure that the vehicle they come up with is basically a vehicle that you could go in the showroom and buy. We are really in a transformative period, greater than I think has been in the industry in the last 50 years. So the work that you're doing, creating the future of technology and mobility couldn't be more exciting. Not long after the OSU team took home their trophies, they embarked on another EcoCar EV challenge with Cameron Russell as their new team lead. It's my sixth year on the team and I was our mechanical lead last year. So I just kind of stepped up in the role. She make everything it's easy. We work together as a team to try to just, you know, run together and move forward together. I believe we're around 50 in total. When we compare our data to the College of Engineering and other areas, we have higher employment rates and higher starting salaries. And just working through us, you get a lot of hands-on experience that you can't get in the classroom. I had the privilege of being on the EcoCar 3 team and we were re-engineering a 2016 Chevy Camaro, which is performance and pretty, pretty awesome to electrify a performance vehicle. This is a sports car. You're trying to fit a really huge battery pack inside of this thing. Everything has to work synergistically together, and that's just from the integration perspective. After that, you have to make everything talk to each other. It's literally a portion of building the car from scratch. No small feat. But that's exactly what students at the Center for Automotive Research are equipped to do. That, and a whole lot more. We're looking at the entire vehicle and 
traffic infrastructure all the way down to how can we improve the cell chemistry of an individual battery. Many people think it's only the electrification aspect, but in addition to having a much more fuel efficient powertrain. Can electric vehicles be used to put electricity back on the grid or to help me maybe power my house? V to X or V to everything, things that the whole industry is working on and things that we're working on here at DOE are on connectivity. If we have more information about the route that we're going to take, the trips that we're going to take, if I know what people driving around me are doing, I could drive my vehicle safely and I could drive it more efficiently. It's all part of that broader uh, ecosphere of electrification. That broader ecosphere of vehicle-to-everything automation is the focus of the new EcoCar EV Challenge. And this time, they're going straight for the gold. We are, for the next four years, going to be working on a 2023 Cadillac Lyric and focusing on the powertrain for that, hopefully integrating in new motors, and then focusing a lot on the connected and automated vehicle side of that, making it a level three vehicle. The Lyric is great because that's a top-of-the-line luxury vehicle and a lot of these new technologies you see in vehicles, whether it's something to do with the drivetrain or creature comforts in the cabin itself, tend to happen first on the luxury vehicles. One of the main challenges we're gonna face is dealing with the, the sophistication of the new vehicle platforms. They've been hardened from a kind of a cybersecurity perspective. There's a lot more challenges there just in terms of talking with the vehicle. Another main challenge is just with electrification is being able to retrofit additional motors into the vehicle. Packaging in these vehicles is very tight. They try to maximize the interior space and minimize weight. Every cubic inch of space is generally got something in it. So we have to be very creative in how we package things, how we run electric lines. There's lots of systems we have to add in. Is it like secret, the stuff that you're gonna plan to do uh, on the Cadillac or how does that work? So a lot of it is with GM's confidential data and then our various sponsors. They'll see what we do at the end of the year. Tell me about the secrets that you have to keep. Um, I can't tell you secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't give away the secret sauce. But every vehicle from each of the different Eagle Car teams is going to be unique. We're building the car virtually first, which echoes what happens in industry. That's important for both performance as well as for safety. From there, then, we will do tests in our own facility where we have a chassis dyno, which is essentially a treadmill for a car. We then go to closed course testing at the Transportation Research Center. And then eventually we can get cleared by going through different system safety milestones to actually be able to take it out on the road. And we also then will test at GM's facility as well. But before they build a winning car, they're gonna build a winning team. So really excited. This year we're partnering with Louisville Forest University, which is about an hour southwest of Columbus. It's a historically black college. Founded in 1856, Wilberforce became America's first university to be owned and operated by African Americans. We really wanted to make sure with, with EcoCar EV Challenge that we really had a dedicated outreach to minority serving institutions. And so we, we really cast a wide net to make that happen. Unbeknownst to us, Ohio State, when they submitted their proposal, said that they wanted to partner with Wilberforce University. And we did not require that. We did not say that you have to team up with another university. Uh, but the fact that they did that, I think, shows a tremendous initiative and great understanding of the importance of working with universities like Wilberforce. My name is Patrick Rukundo, and I'm junior in electrical engineering, and I do attend Wilberforce University in Zinia, Ohio. I came from in a refugee camp in Rwanda, so when I was growing up, my family didn't have electrical in the house. So I have to make my own electrical by using some old battery I get from anywhere. So when I came here to USA, that was like my dream to help the community, to give them what I have been missing. The students, they are very motivated. They really want to work on right away to jump into the whatever they can do. I try to not waste any opportunity. Their background was not automotive background. They are the engineering students, so computer engineering or electrical engineering. I love to challenge myself, refugee students. It's something we used to it. We every time face new stuff, but it's all about running. There is nothing hard as long as you just put your mind on it. So working with people who know what they're doing just motivates me. Ohio, it's the heart of the Midwest, and the Midwest is the heart of the automotive industry in the United States. So if you just look at you know, Ohio and Michigan, like the number of you know, car parts made and the cars assembled, it's a, it's a pretty big chunk. 
Over half of auto manufacturing jobs involve producing the materials and components that go into vehicles. And there is intense competition globally for this type of manufacturing. Populating this area with people who are knowledgeable in electrification and in terms of autonomy, it strengthens the nation because it's strengthening kind of the core of that manufacturing expertise. Last year, Ford announced it will invest $3.7 billion in assembly plants in Michigan, Ohio, and Missouri, creating 6,200 jobs. Every assembly line job creates over seven additional jobs. And with clean vehicle jobs up 26% in 2021, it's easy to see how experts are projecting 2 million new jobs by 2035. This really is a workforce development program because that, that's what we're doing, right? I think we've had more than uh, that 35 year history of the program. Probably more than 30,000 students have come through the program. The reports and deliverables from the previous year get shared with all the teams. So if one team has a major advantage and they're doing something really cool, the other teams get to see that. That way it challenges us to keep ahead of everybody. So each team has their thing that they do really well and, and we learn from all the different teams that are engaged in the competition. I've always had a love for racing and vehicles and as a kid had go-karts and mini bikes and worked on my own car. As I look at the EcoCar program, there's part of me that has a little bit of jealousy that where were these programs when I was in school? But I think that's what's really cool is to see that these programs do exist and what happens with the students, not only the fun they have with it, but where they end up after they get out of school and the jobs they go into. Our previous team captain, Ron uh, Smith, he, he's up at GM. We have Christina Kuwabara, who was one of our previous captains. Same way, she's at GM. I'll be going to General Motors to be in their like rotational program, and I'm hoping to stay within the automotive industry, specifically mechanical design. They've tracked these students in terms of IP generation once they hit GM, in terms of how fast they, they move up, what kind of roles they can do. And they sing the praises of this program. That, that's why they invest heavily in it. So they know the students that are being created from this through a partnership are, are hot commodities in a sense. I think a lot of it is mentoring. I try my best to kind of not tell people exactly what to do, but lead them towards it, especially when working with undergraduates. I think it's better for them to fail and see what went wrong and kind of get that hands-on experience and be able to learn how to fix it themselves. Do you remember any big failures that you've had? I think my freshman year I had a lot of those. It was my first time joining the team. I'd never even picked up a power tool before. And I showed up to a meeting with no automotive or hands-on experience and I kind of just fell in love with it. I want to target younger audiences and do more outreach events to get women interested in the automotive and STEM fields. I think it's about doing things that haven't been done before, not being afraid of failing and just keep trying new technology, new ideas. I think that's the most important thing is to learn from the mistakes. The more struggles you have with the competition, uh, the more you actually learn. We keep, you know, kind of improving what we've done in the past and kind of keeping that legacy alive. So, you know, it kind of comes full circle. You are at OSU, which is a school that tends to win. I hope we win. It's easy to say, yeah, we're gonna win. They became like a second when there was one team, now it is two teams. We know we can't get first every time, but we're always gunning for it.